the laptop with them. Quick, you open YouTube in this. Oh. Already show it in the YouTube. Can they get it? Yeah. Hmm. No, no, new one. Live. Go to the live show. Or refresh. Yes, live now. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon to everyone and uh, welcome to today's session. I hope uh, you are able to uh, see the Google Hangout as well like uh, our regular show. Can you please be able to punch whether the voice is loud and clear for everybody, doctor? Can you please punch? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we can always toggle with the camera. That's good. Uh, can you be able to punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all the online students? Quickly get me one uh, laptop, I can see the YouTube. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, good, good. Yes, I think the voice is clear. Yes, that's good. So let us make the great beginning. Uh, huh, they're getting it? Okay. So um, the advantage of uh, a Google Hangout is anywhere the teacher is, he did not come to the studio to deliver a session. Rather, he can be able to deliver it from anywhere. So let's start the game. Uh, ultra clear. Very good. Very good. A 40 year old male is admitted with acute inferior wall MI. Half an hour later, his blood pressure is 80 by 50. And uh, what are the most appropriate steps they want to do in order to manage? And his heart rate is only 40 per minute. There's a very, very important clue in this question that uh, you should be able to remember. What is the clue that you are having? There's a severe bradycardia. Typically in inferior wall MI, there's a decreased blood flow happening to the AV node that lead to the development of bradycardia. So how do you want to manage this uh, uh, given clinical scenario, doctor? So classically we will be, uh, yes. So we will be using atropine sulfate in order to um, uh, improve the heart rate whenever there is any heart block, which is uh, uh, the fastest way. Now, what is the characteristic feature of tricuspid insufficiency uh, whenever it is there, when there is a regurgitation is happening, then how do you, how will be the JVP? What happens to this? 
A wave, C wave, and B wave. So what is tricuspid regurgitation doing? It is making the blood in the right atrium to fall back into the, uh, I mean, the right ventricular blood is falling back into the right atrium when the ventricle is undergoing systole. So that is the reason there's a lot of blood inside the right atrium. So the too much of the blood in the right atrium will reflect back on the jugular vein and make the jugular vein pulsations to become very prominent which is a very, very important characteristic feature. And uh, there is an obliteration of the V descent, and there is a prominent CV wave, which is classical in case of tricuspid regurgitation is what you need to remember. So what is meant by Lancy's sign? Whenever there is a tricuspid regurgitation, there's a retrograde blood flow from the right atrium during the ventricular systole, and it will cause a large pulsation in the jugular vein, which is basically called uh, the Lancy sign is what you need to remember. Now let us look at this video. In a tricuspid regurgitation, what is happening uh, to the patient? Yes. Now I'm also having uh, your chat available for me to see. Can you enlarge the chat part? No, only the chart part can you enlarge. Yeah. So uh, that's good. So this is called the Lancy sign where you have a prominent pulsation which is happening in the jugular vein when there is a tricuspid regurgitation. Um, yes. That's all. Okay. okay. That's good. <clears throat> So you can see there is an A wave, which is because of the atrial contraction during last one third of the diastole. And uh, the blood enters from uh, the right atrium into the right ventricle. And uh, atrium undergoes relaxation. Because of that, there is a fall in the pressure, which is basically called the X descent. And after the X descent, you are having the atrium filled with the blood from the great vessels that lead to the V wave. And after the V wave, the AV valves open and that makes the blood to flow from atrium into the, into the ventricle. And that is the reason the Y descent occurs. So what happens in tricuspid regurgitation? When the atrium is undergoing relaxation, that time the ventricular blood is regurgitating into the atrium. So that is the reason the fall in the pressure which you are expecting X descent will be absent if there is a tricuspid regurgitation is what you need to remember. And uh, during the uh, Dr. Sony is saying, sir, in the new update, the core slide is not rotating. So looking small letters on the slide, but you can always enlarge the enlarge. You can use the fingers to enlarge the slide doctor. That option is there in the notes. Another thing with your finger, you can flip the note slides in the UMedico app so that the slide will be moving. Uh, uh, second slide to third slide, etc. You can bookmark, set up the reminders. Everything else is there. Still, we are going to give one more version tomorrow, another version day after tomorrow, so that we are bringing new changes in the new Medico app. So don't be disappointed about, please report the bugs that you have in the new Medico app, if any, and uh, we are there to help you out. Okay. So I hope you are all liking the new version of the new Medico app. <clears throat> Is the voice loud and clear? Yeah. So that's good. Now, uh, you have, so what happens ultimately in case of uh, the tricuspid regurgitation is the X descent will be absent. That is what you need to remember. Now, at the end of regurgitation, 
I mean, at the end of the um, the atrium, what what is the situation of the atrium in tricuspid regurgitation? It is receiving the regular venous return. It is receiving regurgitant venous return. I mean, regurgitant blood from the ventricle. Totally, the atrium is fully pregnant with blood. So when the AV valves open from a very high pressure, the blood is moving to the ventricles. So the fall that you see in the atrium towards ventricle, uh, towards the ventricle is very steep. So a very steep Y descent, absence of the X descent will typically create what is called as a CV wave is what you need to ultimately remember. Now in acute aortic regurgitation, give me an underlying cause for acute aortic regurgitation. Now punch your uh, answer doctor, yes. I am hardly seen because uh, most of the times we have a feedback that uh, what is more important is the slides than me. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Ravi is proposing ankylizing spondylitis, but it's a chronic aortic regurgitation. Then I can see Sean Chaco is proposing Marfan, clean bowl. Ritwik is also saying Marfan, Dasari also. Why don't you think acute pathology leading to infective endocarditis? Akireddi Madhavi Jindavar, absolutely. It is the Infective endocarditis, which is responsible for the acute aortic uh, regurgitation, is what you need to remember. Now, what are the early complications of acute MI? These are all, except one complication in this occur after two to three weeks after the myocardial infarction. So, which is that complication, which is after two to three weeks, is my question to all of you. Question number nine. Ravi is proposing Dressler syndrome. Absolutely right. Dressler syndrome symptoms occur two to three weeks after the myocardial infarction is what you need to remember. Now, in nephrotic syndrome, which serum protein, the level of which protein do not increase in the nephrotic syndrome is my question to all of you. Should you answer, doctor? <clears throat> question number 10. Uh, which is that uh, 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 serum protein uh, that does not increase. Question number 10. Monica Sharma thinks ceruloplasmin, a good number of you. Madhavi thinks transferring Prajakta Bhagat Jindabad. Absolutely right. As Prajakta Bhagat rightly says, it is a fibrinogen that need to be remembered. That is not the one which will not decrease, rather it will increase. That's the reason nephrotic syndrome is called a prothrombotic condition is what you need to remember. Which is the normal anion gap metabolic acidosis out of all these entities instead of a high anion gap. Question number 11. Should you answer doctor? Yes. One of our students said he will join this to become a live student to become give answers but uh, the guy uh, last moment he could not come up yes uh, that's good monica and everybody is proposing renal tubular acidosis last week only we have all uh, uh, discussed this a patient of cirrhosis has oliguria worsening azotemia and the urinary sediment is normal and the urinary sodium concentration is only 5 milliequivalents. What are the most likely cause leading to a low urinary sodium with an increase of sodium retention? And uh, uh, patient is developing oliguria and worsening azotemia. Rocket trader thinks hepatorenal. Ravi Kumar thinks ATN. Uh, Monica also clean bold thinking. So ATN and hepatorenal is a common confusion. Okay. Now the question is cirrhosis patient developing azotemia. That is an important clue for you. So this is classically a case of hepatorenal syndrome. So why in hepatorenal syndrome, what is the underlying uh, pathophysiology? <clears throat> 
Basically, in cirrhosis, there's portal hypertension. Because of the portal hypertension, there's a splanchnic vasodilatation. Because of that vasodilatation, the circulatory volume in the regular blood vessels become diminished. That lead to renin angiotensin system to activate. And that lead to the renal sodium avidity leading to ascites. And the renal vasoconstriction occur as a response leading to hepatorenal syndrome and the rise of the creatinine. So this is the typical thing where there is no primary pathology in the kidney, but the kidney's failure is a consequence of an intense splanchnic vasodilatation in a case of the portal hypertension is what you have to basically remember. Now, if you look at the sequence of events that happen uh, in, um, uh, in the case of uh, um, hepatorenal syndrome, cirrhosis will increase intrahepatic vascular resistance that lead to portal hypertension that will increase the splanchnic production of vasodilator, vasodilators that lead to splanchnic vasodilatation and a severe arterial underfilling and that lead to development of a low arterial pressure that stimulates the vasoconstrictor system and that lead to renal vasoconstriction and that renal vasoconstriction lead to azotemia is what you have to ultimately remember. So once more, emphasizing to you the cirrhosis of liver, uh, how does it lead to hepatorenal syndrome? The splanchnic arterial vasodilatation leading to the fall of the systemic vascular resistance and decreasing the effective arterial blood volume, stimulating the renin angiotensin system. You should not forget this sequence of events, uh, which is uh, a very important and a key feature. Now, what are the major criteria for the hepatorenal syndrome? What are the minor criteria? Favorite question of the examiner. <clears throat> So, advanced chronic hepatic failure, portal hypertension, background merena, just renal failure uh, decay. Serum creatinine more than 1.5. Our 24 hours urinary creatinine clearance less than 40 in the classical feature. And there should not be a shock, there should not be any massive GI bleed or any renal fluid losses, or nephrotoxic drugs, or hypovolemia, none of these, or asepsis, none of these should be the predisposing factor for the renal failure. So hepatorenal syndrome is a diagnosis of exclusion, is what you have to basically remember. Then you have withdrawn the diuretics, you have done the volume expansion with one and a half liters of isotonic saline, still the renal function is not improving. That is the next important criteria. Then proteinuria less than 500 to say that there is no intrinsic renal pathology, but still the creatinine is elevated to call it as hepatorenal syndrome and no obstructive uropathy and no parenchymal renal disease. These are all the major criteria. So today's afternoon, you are becoming the champions in the topic of hepatorenal syndrome. Don't forget, doctor, you will all remember me in the tomorrow's exam hall in NEET PG 2019 when a question on hepatorenal syndrome comes. So all these slides will be available once more in the UMedico app. And you bookmark this, set up a reminder, and then the app will automatically keep giving you the reminders. Hope all of you have uh, downloaded the new version of uh, the UMedico app on the Android store. If you have not, so please do that. You have around 54,000 PowerPoint slides, which I used in all the various lectures. There are many more videos, many more PowerPoints that are going to get uploaded, uh, which we used in the class notes. You can set up the reminders, you can voice record your uh, personal uh, voice files, share it with others. Everything is now possible on the UMedico app. 
how many of you have downloaded the u medico app and enjoying the new features of the notes doctor so please punch let me see yeah so what are the minor criteria of hepatorenal syndrome you have to prove that there is a renal failure so how do you prove that the minor criteria are the ones which say there is a renal failure urine volume less than 500 ml urine sodium less than 10 to say that there is a sodium retention very good roger says just updated sir tomorrow one more version is going to come with more amount of debugging of uh, small small uh, issues but uh, please report with your uh, uh, you will find the list of the slides in the topic once you click on the slide you will get the slide blown up that you can be able to expire okay then you can record a voice of yourself and share it with others on that particular slide you can bookmark and you can set up a reminder every 15 minutes it keep reminding you one of the points that you have set up as the reminders you can also sort the slides based on most bookmarked slides and uh, most uh, viewed slides everything uh, on the top right corner you have got a button to click which you can be able to uh, sort the slides accordingly so that as more and more number of students are viewing and bookmarking the slides the intelligence of the system will increase and you need not read all the slides only most bookmarked slides you can always review so that's how we created the system okay doc. then urine rbc's will be less than 50 per high power field serum sodium less than 130 these are the criteria then once more doctor there are two kinds of hepatorenal syndrome you should not forget hrs1 hrs2 lot of times this question is being asked repeatedly in the jipmer and uh, all india and uh, pga exam hepatorenal syndrome is a very high yield topic so what is hrs1 what are the main differences typically you have doubling of the serum creatinine in less than two weeks hrs1 but in hrs2 it is not that fast renal impairment gradually progressive there is only a precipitating event like a infection that lead to the hrs1 but there is no such thing in hrs2 and a diuretic resistant ascites is a feature of hrs2 not hrs1 and the median survival is only six months in hrs2 but uh, there is a 10 percent survival in 90 days without treatment in hrs1 so they are the main uh, differences which you have to be very sure about so doctor let us quickly how do you treat don't forget finally how do you treat there are two important things to treat hepatorenal syndrome whole problem is planktonic vasodilatation so give a vasoconstriction and give an albumin so terlipresin midodrin octreotide noradrenaline they are the ones which are predominantly given in in order to treat the hepatorenal syndrome is what you have to ultimately remember now should you answer doctor sspe is because of which infection question number 13 so this uh, google hangout is um, a real cool uh, uh, cool cool thing to do even you can sit in uh, a miami beach or las vegas on the side of the pool also you can sit and still you can be able to broadcast the class uh, live to the students so thanks to the youtube guys brilliant guys in fact if you volunteer to come forward and become uh, a uh, participant i can send you a link of this uh, um, link invitation you click and then from your phone you can participate and why chatting you can even speak and then you why you thought that as answer that will be really helpful and exciting for everybody else but you need to come forward that is most important right now 
uh, it is a measles virus. Absolutely. Now, doctor, Parkinsonism may. Question number 14. What is the feature that you do not see or do see? Question number 14. Should you answer, doctor? What is the feature in Parkinsonism? Yes. That you cannot see or you can see. Ravi proposes 134, not the nystagmus. Absolutely right. Question and guy, cogwheel rigidity, failure to swing the arms. This you should answer, doctor. If you don't answer this question, I will be very, very sad. Right homonemous hemianopia. What is the site of the lesion which lead to right homonemous hemianopia? Should you answer? Yeah, Samsung says Google Hangout needs unlimited internet. No, 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 no. Google Hangout just requires uh, a regular 3G or 4G. Simply, I will send you an invitation if you give me your Gmail ID. You click on the uh, invitation video, you join this broadcast, and you will be seen by everybody who are participating on the chat. Right? So that is the simple principle. Very good. I can see A versus B. Good. Akhil is proposing B. Absolutely. Akhil Jindabar. That left optic tract or left optic radiation or left lateral geniculate body, anything can cause homonymous hemianopia. You should not do this kind of questions wrong, doctor. One of the favorite questions of the examiner. So you should know that uh, if there is a uh, ipsilateral scotoma, that is that side, there is a partial optic nerve injury. Then if there is any complete blindness, complete optic nerve injury, then bitemporal hemianopia, where do you get? where both the temporal fields are lost. In the optic chasma compression, the nasal fibers on both the, from both the sides which are decussating are the ones which are compressed and that lead to loss of the temporal visual field. So bitemporal hemianopia in chiasma. Then optic tract may, there will be contralateral nasal and ipsilateral temporal get affected. Temporal fibers get affected. So that is the reason you get uh, a contralateral temporal and ipsilateral nasal visual field loss, which is basically called homonemous hemianopia. When Mayer's loop is involved, you get homonemous upper quadrant tonopsia, optic radiation you get, the homonemous hemianopsia with the macular sparing, visual cortex also you get homonemous hemianopsia is what you need to remember. Please don't forget, doctor, one question invariably asked on visual field defects without that there is no question paper. Would you have to master this? Bookmark this slide in the U Medical app. Let it come up. Keep springing up to you and reminding you that, hey, man, visual field defects. Remember, that's what it should say. Now, doc, the next question. Raised alkaline phosphatase is typically seen in all these scenarios. So what is the condition that lead to hypercalcemia with a normal alkaline phosphatase? Alkaline phosphatase is a reflection of osteoblastic activity, right? Uh, yes. So what is your answer? Raised alkaline phosphatase. Where do you see? Question number 21. Uh, I can see Harry proposing D. Accurately saying D, excellent doctor. Classical question. Now, let's look into the various statements about acromegaly. You should know that acanthosis nigricans, one of the reasons leading to that is the acromegaly. Growth hormone secretion typically is increased if you administer TRH. Thyroxin releasing, TSH releasing hormone 
even if you give that even growth hormone secretion also is increased instead of getting suppressed that is a sign of acromegaly and diabetes can be seen in about 25 percent of acromegalies so ravi kumar and everybody answering c absolutely right now hypomagnesemia whenever hypomagnesemia is there what is important thing i told you hypokalemia become refractory to treatment to jitna koshish karo hypokalemia agar recover nahi ho rahe aap potassium diya potlor diya potlor pilaya sab kuch kiya fir bhi potassium levels are not improving what you should tell your nurse to do please go and check the serum magnesium you should ask commonly hypomagnesemia makes hypokalemia refractory to the treatment is what you need to remember so i can see most of you are saying uh, c is the answer so it is the beta blocker pancreatic insufficiency diabetes poorly controlled most of you are attracted and seduced by the wrong answer called c i am very happy the best students of the country today 122 who are attending online um yeah online i am able to uh, uh uh i am able to correct you right ha huh. so ravi is saying sir in between you are skipping some uh, questions yeah they are called as premature ventricular complexes and skipped beats so all questions very difficult to discover uh, revise let us revise those questions like medicine surgery gynecologist pm so they uh, uh, you required some amount of uh, juggling uh, for a couple of hours so that's a whole idea ravi so very good so you should remember doctor causes of hypomagnesemia you have to bookmark this app in the i mean uh, this slide in the u medico app malnutrition diarrhea lou diuretics tubular pathologies like atn renal tubular acidosis and um, interstitial nephritis manitol hyperglycemia then diabetes hyperthyroidism hyperadrenocortism these are all the important reasons that can lead to hypomagnesemia is what you have to remember so now you consider the following statement tell me what lead to cavernous sinus thrombosis there's an area in the front of the uh, face uh philtrum etc which is called the dangerous area so question number 24 ravi kumar rightly says wrongly says both a and one and two are true boils around the nose must be promptly treated superior lesions around the nose will lead to cavernous sinus thrombosis is what you need to remember is ka answer batao yaar hyperkalemia mein ecg ka what is not a finding if you answer this wrong no i will be very sad so many times we discussed once more this question is going to come 25 ravi proposes b abhiraj paul also actually abhiraj paul said that he will participate in a live broadcast and pick up the smartphone and uh, whole country can see him but uh, last moment uh, uh, oh hat de diya right uh yes toggle below appearing bottom of slides okay uh i can see the pr interval uh yes right very good so the correct answer is stall p waves is what you need to remember so whenever there is a hyperkalemia what are the things that you want to uh, remember doctor initially you have normal p waves tall t waves then the p waves flatten and prolongation of pr interval occur ultimately p waves disappear and there is a development of bradycardia uh yes uh bradycardia is what you need to remember now doc which of the tests 
has got a great utility, especially in the window period of the HIV, which extends sometimes for a few years be between zero positivity and the appearance of symptoms. I mean, the, and the infection. Yes. Ravi proposes P24. Gulam Bhatt says CD4 count. Excellent. Prajakta, Ravi, everybody, very good. Now, tuberculoid leprosy ke baare mein aapka rai kya hai? What is wrong about tuberculoid leprosy is my question to all of you. Question number 27. Should you answer, doctor? Typically, tuberculoid leprosy may characteristically, there are uh, few lesions with very well demarcated edges. There is a mark, narrow damage. They tend to heal quite spontaneously. But lepromatous leprosy may type 2 lepra reaction is more common, not in tuberculoid. That is what you have to basically understand. So let us talk about the type 2 lepra reaction. It is also called erythema nodosum leprosum, exclusively seen in lepromatous end of the leprosy. It is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. 30% of all lepromatous cases have at least one attack of this uh, type 2 lepra reaction. Sometimes, it is it will proceed the diagnosis and there will be dome shaped lesions with ill-defined margin that characterize the type 2 lepra reactions these are the points which you have to remember i will tell doctor what is the immunological reaction that you see in good pasture syndrome is my question to all of you question number 28 should your answer Yes, rocket trader is proposing type 3. Projecta thinks type 3. Oh my God, all of you are thinking type 3. You mean immunocomplex? Come on, doctor, please don't do this mistake. Don't break my heart. Ryani, Rayani, Yatin, Dr. Harry, Revati, Jindaba. That's right. It is type 2 doctor, anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies. Jab antigen fixed rehta, antibody ghoomte rehta, aur usko attack karega, isko kete hai type 2. Antigen bhi free hai, antibody bhi free hai, dono milke love ho gaya, antigen antibody complex ban gaya, wo jaake kahi tissue mein deposit ho gaya, wo hota hai. Type 3 immune complex mediator. Be very sure, doctor. I say mistakes nahi karna when you are the students of Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. 137 online. I am very happy to see you guys for giving your wonderful Sunday. Shoot your answer. Leptospirosis. Is ka incubation period kya hai? Or how will be the intensity of the jaundice? Do you like to call it as an enzootic disease? What is your call about it? Question number 29, shoot your answer. Ravi proposes A, saying 1 to 4, okay, but not 3. Gulam Bhatt thinks 2 is not okay, but 1, 3, 4. Okay, so let us see. Gulam Bhatt, clean bowl, you should remember. It is a ubiquitous and zootic disease. Incubation period is 2 to 20 days. Urine will have hematuria, microscopic. And there is no relation between the intensity of the jaundice and the prognosis is what you have to remember. SVC syndrome, kaha hota hai? In all this, you will find SVC syndrome. Patient will have an intense suffocation if you give steroid, if the underlying cause is lymphoma, it will melt and patient gets an intense relief. Question number 30, Ravi thinks, you know, bronchogenic carcinoma, most common cause, Ravi, you can't do this kind of mistake. Now, uh, rocket trader is proposing 
pneumomediastinum. Okay. Let's see what is the answer. Absolutely, rocket trader, Jindabad, Jindabad. Now, if you look at all these classical dermatological clinical signs, you should remember that um, Nikolsky is seen in Pemphigus vulgaris. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Nikolsky. Then Erythema multiforme and Steven Johnson has got a relationship. And Kovner phenomena and psoriasis and nodosum and lepra reaction. So they both are related is what you need to ultimately remember. Now, doctor, what is the main site of vitamin B12 absorption? It is a terminal ileum, as all of you know very well. I'll try to go a little more faster on easy questions. Iska answer aap batana padega. Polymyositis. What are the true statements that you need to remember? Yes, doc. Polymyositis. Question number 38. Ravi is proposing C. Excellent, Ravi. Sudhakar, Sudarshan, Monika, Sharma, Sean, Chako, Clean, Bold. Ocular muscle involvement, extra ocular muscle involvement is not a feature. There will be elevated creatinine kinase, proximal muscle weakness. Patient will say, Doctor, I cannot get up from a squatting position. They will also have dysphagia. They are all the true statements. So what is the importance of this uh, important sign, Doctor, in uh, polymyositis? You should remember that it is the heliotrope rash which is the classical feature, the color of the heliotrope rash is something that you should not forget. Now, doctor, match this list with one another. Very easy question. Rheumatoid arthritis may have sabko malum hai. Baker cyst hota hai. Reiter syndrome may hota hai. Keratoderma, blemorrhagica. And Jogren's may, there is a lympho, cytic destruction of uh, the parotid glands. So that is the reason there is a development of xerostomia. And uh, finally, onycholysis of the digits of the nails is a feature of psoriatic arthritis is what you need to remember. Doc, out of all this, which is antipsychotic and it is not used, in uh, anxiety disorder, you have to correctly answer to recognize at least that it is an antipsychotic but not anxiolytic. Question number 14 Ravi thinks emit triptylin. Come on, Ravi. Yes. What is your answer? Ravi, clean bowl, Abhishek, Velnafaxin, clean bowl. Then uh, rocket trader thinks Busperon. Clean bowl. Then who else? Who else? Uh, Ranjit doctor is proposing. Uh, Ranjit doctor is absolutely right. Risperidone doctor. Risperidone is uh, a antipsychotic. Is what you need to remember. So risperidone, classically, uh, you should remember that typical neuroleptic hota hai. All typical neuroleptics, kya karega? They will lead to elevation of prolactin. They lead to ecathesia, agitation, anxiety, insomnia, headache, weight gain, metabolic syndrome. They are all the problems of the risperidone. Agar aap a question wrong kare to, aap kya karne wale hai? Go back to the Umedico app. Go to the DNB, go to the psychiatry in the DNB, in the psychiatry, go to the uh, schizophrenia topic, go to the pharmacology topic. In that already antipsychotics, antidepressants are there. So that is the thing you should plan today afternoon.
सब लोग रेड किया मैं रॉन्ग किया मैं क्यों कर रहा हूं हाउ केन आई इंप्रूव एंड देन पंच ऑन दैट स्लाइड एंड सेट अप रिमाइंडर दैट इज हाउ यू शुड सप्लीमेंट यू मेडिको टू बिकम यूर कंपेनियन इज वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर Ravi is asking, how will tricyclic and angiolysis can go together? You need to uh, review what are all the indications. Tricyclics are very broad spectrum in their action. Is what you need to remember. Good question. Now, SIR is what are all the features to define systemic inflammatory response syndrome? Is my question to all of you. Question number forty-one. Should you answer, doctor? Very happy to see 149 watching online. बहुत खुश हुआ हम. Right. So, Revati is saying, "Bradycard या नहीं होता सर." Shikha Munka is asking, sir, which we can read, DNB or NEET? Actually. neat is a wrong word they used in that uh, library it is a theory high yield topic list dnb is all the mcq based topic wise discussion of the high yield topics jo neat bol ke folder hai u medico courses mein that is a high yield topic theory uh, review so there is a reason uh, uh, we are going to add aims jipman and all these blocks all the notes that we are discussing is going to be there and around 150 full scale grants that we have uh, discussed all these days will also be available 150 into nearly 200 200 questions nearly um 30000 questions notes will be available for you you can punch what all the questions that want reminder notifications you medico will be the mother of all inventions in technology to uh, help a neat pg preparing aspirant slowly they are uploading into the server already 54000 slides they got uh, uploaded and they are going to upload aims pgi neat pg and all these discussions i can see most of you answering it as b let us see the correct answer it is not bradycardia let's see how do you define sars be very sure doctor Temperature more than 38.3 or less than 36 point 36 degrees, either hypo or hyperthermia. Heart rate more than 90, not bradycardia, tachycardia. Respiratory rate more than 20, tachypnea. WBC count either leukopenia less than 4,000 or more than 12,000. One of these. Then blood glucose more than 7.7 millimoles per liter. And new altered mental status. this is the definition of sir is doctor once more this question is going to come in the tomorrow's md entrance you have to be 100% sure while answering doctor now which is not a complication of malaria is my uh, question to all of you question number 42 easy question but uh, you should be in a position to um, answer 42 Rodri is saying, "Sir, our one time I made a mistake. Answering me, no matter what. Life's biggest mistake is to not fall. No matter what, I am going to fall. No matter what, I am going to fall. No matter what, I am going to fall. And my job is to make you fall, hold your hand, and once more make you to get up, rise up." and you become more stronger every time you are falling and rising please remember that is all life is all about that so what is your answer doctor 42 roger is saying c yes absolutely so at least monica aur chirag goel hamare toote hue hindi from andhra pradesh telangana uh nizam hindi i learned hindi from my patients all my patients are from the old charminar area irkhan ho raha hai doctor sahab are irkhan kya hota hai jaundice so uh slowly slowly uh, uh learned one of our uh, patient uh, ahmed ali khan 
I still remember um, he's a mechanic. So he had got diabetes, hypertension. So what is he asking? sugar or BP tablet Then uh, one of our nurse, Mahbuba, is our uh, senior uh, staff nurse. Sir, baat us dinon ka nahi hota hai bole to. He is talking about the importance, Dr. Saab bola. Oh, that is the Nizam Hindi. All right, all right. Koi baat nahi, mere bhai. Sildenafil likhenge ya nahi likhenge? Get an ECT done. Let me check that you don't have coronary risk factors uh, or a coronary artery. Uh, then I can use Sildenafil on prescription. So uh, that is very important. <clears throat> so, uh, which is not a complication of malaria. So hypoglycemia is not a complication of malaria. Cardiac troponin is elevated in uh, which condition other than myocardial infarction, Dr. Question number 43. Yes. Very happy to see 159 online viewers. Yes. Should you answer? Good. Uh, 43, question number 43. I can see uh, Indu Mukhi, Saptarshi Das, excellent. Udar West Bengal se, either Orissa tak hamare students aaj online mein hai. Hum bohut kush hai. That's good, doctor. Chronic kidney failure also can lead to development of elevated cardiac troponin, which you need to remember. Now, doctor, which is uh, uh, a physiological change that you see in COPD. This question, if you do wrong, doctor, you have to start a emergency declaration on COPD topic and review it, right? Prahlad says Bihar Sevi, Mittal Gujarat Sevi. Badia, badia. Please ask all your classmates to subscribe, doctor. Please. Uh, I, I would like to see more number of subscribers on this channel, YouTube channel, and uh, that will help us a lot. That means a lot for us. That's good. Wow, Dr. L is from Jeddah. That's good. Uh, I'm seeing most of you saying two, three, four. Absolutely right. So there is a increase in total lung capacity is what you need to remember. So let us review the COPD. FEV1 in all three types of COPD, it is diminished. FEV1 after the bronchodilator will increase. Residual volume typically is increased because air is trapped within the lungs. Total lung capacity is classically increased with the hyperinflated lungs in case of the emphysema. And diffusion capacity of carbon monoxide is typically diminished in emphysema because of the destruction of the alveoli is what you have to basically remember. So now doctor, in ARDS, what is the classical feature is my question to all of you in acute respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, what is the correct statement? So we should remember that um, you have uh, gram-negative septicemia, gastric aspiration, and myocarditis. In any of this, there can be development of ARDS. Now, which is not a feature of botulism? Easy question. Botulism may, all of you know, cranial nerve deficits occur. Sudden onset of quadriplegia occur. That also you know. Question number 51. Yes. Very good. Akash, I'm envious about you. You are from Darjeeling. Next class, I will fly tomorrow itself. And then um, now I have a freedom. I'm no more uh, need to be in the studio. I can sit in the moving train in Darjeeling if 4G is there. And uh, 
वट इज दैट सॉन्ग वेरी फेमस सॉन्ग मेरे सपनों की रानी हो जिंदा रानी हो राइट सो सिंगिंग दैट सॉन्ग वी कैन स्टिल हैव दिस क्लास फ्रॉम दार्जिलिंग दैट्स गुड क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी वन आई कैन सी ए वर्सेस डी ए वर्सेस डी फ्रॉम ए गुड नंबर ऑफ पीपल यस सो what will it mean there is no hyperpyrexia all guys who said ye are all right 55 year old uh ah mere sapno ki neat pg seat kab aayegi tu right uh aur mere zindagi kab banayegi tu oh mere neat pg seat aoge ya nahi right we have to sing next two months there's only song that's right so question number 52 i can see dawn proposing acute lvf absolutely dawn is dm cardiology even rocket trader excellent excellent so s3 galop s3 is a sign of the ventricular failure s4 is a sign of uh, atrial non atrial uh, uh galop it is called because of the lv hypertrophy is what you need to remember now doctor should you answer small cell carcinoma of lung what is it associated with question number 53 one strong answer 53 yeah um uh, all of you know that SADH can occur because the ectopic ACDH production in small cell cancer. Question number fifty-three. Rocket trader thinks even Edison. Oh, come on, doctor. Yesterday only we discussed no P by Q antibodies against the voltage-gated presynaptic calcium channels is the problem in case of the Lambert term is what you need to remember, which is seen in small cell cancer. very good i can see uh, abhishek vyas thinks uh, very good hari varshan devanshi takkar jindabad absolutely you are right absolutely you are right now you have done abdominal percussion liver dullness is not obliterated in which condition is the favorite question of the examiner Question number fifty-four. Should you answer, doctor? Yes. Question number fifty-four. So, uh, Don is proposing emphysema. Oh, emphysema. My lungs are overinflated, and they cover up the uh, liver, doctor, so that liver dullness is obliterated. rocket trader says fatty liver absolutely right so emphysema perforated viscous pulmonary hepatitis there are all the scenarios where you have obliteration of the liver dullness is what you need to remember now regarding helicobacter pylori what type of organism it is classically you should remember that it is a gram negative organism and it produces the urease it lead to the chronic gastritis it is not epithelio invasive is what you need to remember a 60 year old increasing dysphagia to solids for 3 months loss of weight very important clue loss of weight agar hai to iska matlab kya hota hai there is a underlying malignancy leading to the obstruction stenosis that's what you need to remember so carcinoma esophagus is something that you need to consider now let's talk about the gentamicin ampicillin you should remember that uh ampicillin very much covers the listeria but uh, i'll be going little fast don't mind uh, because we have to finish more number of questions right but some questions i will be uh journeying along with you good So fifty-seven Sudhakar Sudarshan is saying uh, B absolutely. Gentamicin aided people with a poor renal function. There is always a risk. 
that you need to basically remember for the sterilization of the pharmacological products we will be using the ethylene oxide which is classically used now coming to the peptic ulcer eradication of h pylori is a part of your strategy complications are very much an indication for surgery then Zollinger Ellison made there's an intractable peptic ulceration which is very recurrent in spite of pumping a lot of proton pump inhibitors. Now coming to gastric ulcer versus duodenal ulcer, duodenal ulcer may malignant tendency is not there but gastric may gastric ulcer can become a gastric carcinoma is what you have to remember. Now doc. Um, in a patient who has got a lacerated injury of the foot, so uh, who is not actively immunized against tetanus, what is that which is indicated as a tetanus prophylaxis? Immediately, you need to pro provide a passive protection. That is by giving the tetanus immunoglobulin is what you have to remember. Now, which neoplasms can lead to Retention of the water and can lead to water intoxication is my question to all of you. Should you answer, doctor? Water intoxication, 61? Yes. Should it? So, water intoxication means there should be SIADH. Dr. Harry says, oat cell, Syed, the Isa's clean bowl. And uh, a good number of you are very sure it is oat cell carcinoma. Now, swan ganch catheter, it is the pulmonary wedge pressure that you will be able to test, which is a reflection of the left atrial pressure, which become elevated when left ventricle fails. So how do you identify the left ventricular uh, failure, doctor? LV failure lead to rise of LA pressure. Rise of LA pressure lead to rise of... Uh, the pulmonary capillary wet pressure calculated by the Swan Gange catheter. Where do you see delirium? All of you know, mad like a bat, atropine toxicity, blind like a bat, and uh, mad also because of delirium. One organ of phosphor poisoning case, if you manage, you will you will remember about this atropine associated uh, um, atropine how the patient will be shouting in the ward, you can be able to see. Now, Doc, Hodgkin's disease, what is except about it? Shoot your answer, question number 64. Yes. It is a painless lymphadenopathy. Absolutely. There's a Pell Epstein pattern of fever. Stage three means it is only confined to one part of the diaphragm. That's good. But Sudhakar, Sudarshan, Dasari, Revati, Dawn, Rocket Trader, Sab Log Clean Bowl. Ab Sab Log Kya Karna? Immediately Jana, you medical app me, Hodgkin's disease me, uh, lymphoma bolke topic hai. Please go run through the questions in DNB question bank, run through the high yield topic notes, punch those, that particular slide which talks about the Staging of the Hodgkin's disease, one of the favorite questions of the examiner. A Reed Steinberg that is not a diagnostic. That is what you need to basically remember. Now, Doc, uh, this is how a Pell Epstein fever looks like. The fever lasts for three to ten days, followed by an febrile period for about three to ten days which is called the Pell Epstein type of fever, which is seen in the case of the Hodgkin's disease, is what you need to remember. Now, what are the causes of the bleeding? Which is the only condition which you can call a thrombotic state is my question to all of you. Yes. Should your answer, doctor? Dengue fever may thrombocyte opinion reta, bleeding reta, sabto malum hai. ITP may be hota, aspirin may be hota. But question number 65, what is your answer? Yes, um, I can see Don saying hit absolutely. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia may thrombocytopenia hota, magar 
the platelets become very sticky and they lead to the formation of the clot which decreases the blood flow to the skin and you will find a lot of skin necrotic lesions that characterizes the hit is what you have to basically remember now let's go to the next slide where do you find a combination of cyanosis and clubbing tell me your answer on that question number 72 cyanosis clubbing except in one situation 72 let me see how good you are yeah rocket trader proposes lung abscess come on clubbing bole to jindagi mein lung abscess ek hi cheez yaad mein aana right ha huh. question number 72 most of you are all saying b here eh? harry thinks c and don thinks d right good good bronchitis me kabhi bhi clubbing nahi hota bronchitis me clubbing hue to kya samajhna you should think there's an underlying bronchogenic carcinoma is something that should come to your mind so please don't forget doctor because smoking lead to the bronchitis smoking also lead to bronchogenic carcinoma otherwise without bronchogenic carcinoma only bronchitis alone never you find clubbing if you found clubbing then you should think and look for an underlying bronchogenic carcinoma favorite question right right now sm is asking how to connect to hangouts hangouts we can do that at the end of the session i will show you one example just you mention your email id i will enter in the invitations here your email id and send push then in your uh, gmail uh, you will find the invitation you click on that and through your phone you got connected to the broadcast and i ask question you answer and the whole world will watch that is how we can make this more interesting so please uh, uh, volunteer to come and uh, loudly get vocal or maza aata hai right right abscess cause sinusis very interesting question right lung abscess mein kyon sinusis aata hai wo thoda lamba story bolna padta ha so but it is seen now multi organ failure bolne ke liye kaun sa criteria use karte hain that is a important question <clears throat> yeah should your answer is me which is not used to define a multi organ failure question number 73 ravi says pao2 by fio2 ke upar unko naraz hai rocket trader thinks bilirubin and uh, don thinks albumin right if don thinks we should accept don dm cardiology serum bilirubin creatinine pao2 by fio2 are all included so doctor first you should know what is the definition agar ye samajh mein aa gaye to wo bhi samajh mein aayega two or more should be there to call it as a multi organ dysfunction syndrome systolic bp less than 90 mental status changes if pao2 by fio2 less than 250 pao2 less than 60 lactic acidosis oliguria platelet less than 80000 liver enzymes more than 2x types of normal that constitutes the definition of the multi organ dysfunction now doctor a 16 year old boy exertional dyspnea hemoptysis pnd joint pains is sir bolne ke baad agar agar answer nahi aaye to apman hai shahen shako please give the correct answer 74 sudhakar sudarshan absolutely says that uh, tricuspid stenosis why paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea means lb failure i mean it is a pulmonary edema which occurs when left atrial pressure is high in which situation you have a high left atrial pressure 74 i can see most of you saying b absolutely now doctor 
in adrenocortical insufficiency may what do you have you have acidosis hypoglycemia not hyper hyponatremia and hyperkalemia not hypo that is the combination adrenocortical insufficiency may when you have steroid deficiency it is as good as having mineralocorticoid deficiency steroids also have a mineralocorticoid act Normally, mineral corticoids kya karta? Sodium retention, potassium loss. Agar wo nahi hai, kya hota? Sodium loss and potassium retention. So, there will be hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, acidosis, hypoglycemia. That is the combination that you see in adrenocortical insufficiency. Life-threatening pneumococcal infection. Kaha dikta aapko? Is a very, very important uh, question. So, obviously, you have sickle cell disease, nephrotic syndrome, classical causes for terminal complement component deficiency that lead to capsulated organisms like the pneumococcal infections to happen. Why? Because sickle cell may autosplenectomy, hai, nephrotic syndrome may loss of this complement proteins into the urine. Hai. So that is the reason the patients will have terminal component of the complement pathways deficiencies is what you need to remember. Now, Doc, Zollinger Ellison May. What is your correct answer? Question number 77. Shoot one strong answer. Yeah. True. Shoot a strong answer. 77. Yes. Ravi is proposing A. Whoa, that is not the age group, Ravi. When is the age group? Harry thinks D, Sudhakar thinks D, Gautam thinks D. Absolutely. D for distinction. So, oh, men two men nahi reta, mere bhai. Men one me reta. If you do this question wrong, it is very bad. So, see, doctor. P pituitary central organ, P parathyroid central organ, P pancreas central organ. So Zollinger Ellison is a part of men one. All the three are central structures. Once more, parathyroid hyperplasia, middle thyroid cancer, and FIO is what you see in men two A. Then you have mucosal neuromas, marfanoid body habitus, middle thyroid cancer, and FIO in men two B. Please don't forget, if you do this question before need PG wrong, it is a sign of severe protein energy malnutrition for the need PG preparation. Be very sure, right? So you have to correct it fast. Now, doctor, with regard to the chronic liver disease, what is your answer? You should know that in chronic liver disease, Thomocytopenia is there, prolonged PTD, prolonged PT, but not decreased factor VIII. Pseudomembranous colitis, easiest question. Clostridium difficile, as all of you know. Now, doc, a patient is having breathlessness. This question is for sale. Uh, is having breathlessness and uh, bilateral basal crepitations. There is a decrease of the total lung capacity, vital capacity, but a normal FEV1 by FPC. That means it is a restrictive lung disease. Which is a restrictive lung disease among the list that has been given to you. Question number 80. Ravi thinks B. Gautam thinks B. Don also. Vishalakshi also. Super duper doctor. So you should be very sure. Restrictive are all those interstitial pathologies like a stiff lung. And normal FEV1 by FEC characterizes them. Normal peak expiratory flow rate. So ARDS, acute viral infections, chronic pneumoconiosis, sarcoidosis, interstitial fibrosis, restrictive. Obstructive may low FEV1 by FEC ratio, low PEFR is typically considered to be the classical feature. 
No, no. 45 year old hypertensive comes to the casualty with three hour history of sudden onset of severe headache, nausea, vomiting, right sided ptosis. Neck stiffness is there. Everything else is normal. What is your answer, doctor? Question number 81. Excellent. Whenever subarachnoid bleed is there because the rupture of a very aneurysm, you get a severe neck stiffness, etc. etc. Now, in hepatic encephalopathy, may which is not the part of the treatment, lactulose, rifaximin, electrolyte supplementation, you should do. But transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shanti karna hi karna. Agar hepatic encephalopathy hai to, it is a contraindication to do the tips, is what you have to basically remember. So, doctor, uh, this is a favorite question of the examiner. I am very happy to see Roger, Mudassi, Raleigh. Everyone is answering it correctly. Very good, very good. Intravascular versus extravascular hemolysis. What are the important features? What is accepted about it? Is the favorite question of the exam. Question number 83. Right. What is TIPS? Come on, Ravi. Transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt. Now, uh, 83. I can see most of you are saying hemoglobinuria. Why not? Intravascular hemolysis releases the hemoglobin, which is diffused into the renal circulation, and hemoglobinuria is what you see. Question number 83. Is answer wrong? Kare to rocket trader, rocket miss ho jayega. Favorite question of the examiner, doctor. General medicine, Dr. Murli students should not do wrong. Revati Jindabad. Decreased serum haptoglobin. That is what you need to remember. See, doctor, there are two types of there are two types of uh, hemolysis. Inside the blood vessel, when the RBCs are passing, they are destroyed. Other is they can happen in the spleen or in the liver, which is called extravascular. It is the IgM type of antibodies predominantly responsible for the intravascular. And IgGs, which don't fix the complement, they are the ones which lead to extravascular hemolysis in spleen, etc., etc. It is the macrophages which eat RBCs if it is happening in the spleen and liver. There is a complement or a shear mediated hemolysis if it is intravascular. So intravascularly when RBCs are split, they release hemoglobin, so hemoglobinemia. They cause hemoglobinuria, they increase the LDH and haptoglobin is something circulating in the plasma. It is uh, the one which is consumed when there is an intravascular hemolysis. So haptoglobin levels will be falling down is what you need to remember. Whereas in extravascular, there is an increased bilirubin, increased LDH. There also there is a decreased haptoglobin. So example of intravascular, kya hota hai? the nocturnal hemoglobinuria, peroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Any valves leading to microangiopathic hemolysis, they are all intravascular. But in extravascular, kya hota hai? Hereditary serocytosis may massive splenomegaly will be there. Warm autoimmune hemolytic uh, anemia. So they are all the examples of extravascular hemolysis is what you need to ultimately remember. Now, doctor, consider these two statements. HOCM lead to sudden cardiac death. All of you will agree. But Dressler is a late complication, not an early complication. So only one is correct. What is the commonest site of hypertensive bleed? Cutamen, basal ganglia, pon, cerebellum. They are the classical locations, not the frontal cortex is what you have to remember. Hypoglycemia is a side effect of which important uh, drug and which one is called as a euglycemic drug. Basic question. If you wrong answer, I will see 
Oh, oh, be careful. Uh, I am able to get Don Revati sulfonyl ureas. Very good. And even Abhishek Vyas also. Excellent, doctor. So, sulfonyl ureas are typically the ones which lead to hypoglycemia. Now, coming to Gilbert. Gilbert's inheritance is autosomal dominant. And uh, the fasting leads to increased bilirubin in Gilbert. But uh, jaundice is not very severe. Over a period of time, it is not progressively increasing jaundice in Gilbert, is what you have to basically remember. Secondary hypertension comes. Obviously, concentrum may hota hai, Cushing's may hota hai, Fio may hota hai, not in carcinoid. This is an absolutely biscuit question, easy to answer. And if you answered even this question wrong, no, Ravi. Ravi should be careful. Cushing, come on, Ravi. Uh, Cushing may. Corticosteroids but Corticosteroids in high concentration have a mineralocorticoid effect. So there is a reason that lead to hypertension. A good number of times, first case of question you will see due to the detection of hypertension. Obi hota hai, right? No, Ravi. Edison's disease may hypertension hota. Cushing may hypertension hota. Come on, Ravi. I'll cry. Right? Yeah. Now, tetralogy of phalome, what do you not see? There is a pulmonic stenosis, pulmonary hypertension, kyo hota hai? Overriding iota hota, VSD hota, right ventricular hypertrophy hota, magar pulmonary hypertension nahi hoga, nahi hoga. Now, high altitude pulmonary edema, let me see how many of you will answer this correctly. High altitude pulmonary edema, question number 96. I know what is the most possible wrong answer. Yes. Ravi thinks D. Uh huh. Who else? Don thinks B. I know that is the most common wrong answer. Then uh, Ritvik Karmuri is a super duper guy. So, uh, very good. Hari Varsh, Sweetie Patil, Abhishek Vyas, Naren Chandra, you're all right. So, high altitude pulmonary edema called hay. Only 24 to 48 hours, Ladakh jane ke baad, Ladakh jane ke baad, it happens. It occurs after the second night. Otherwise, healthy people without any cardiac or pulmonary disease may hota hai. And occurs when people go very rapidly to high altitude and there's an extravasation of fluid from the intra to extravascular space in the lung is what you need to remember. Myocardial infarction may ventricular fibrillation most commonly kills the people. Rupture of interventricular septum can be a complication. Embolization systemically can happen, especially if there is any septal rupture. They are all the true statements. Philadelphia chromosome, how will you detect, doctor? We do in-situ hybridization very much. And uh, PCR, cytogenetics, all of them will help you. With regard to the celiac disease, come on, let me see how many of you correctly answer this question. Yes. About celiac disease, what is your answer, doctor? Yes. <clears throat> 99. Question number 99. Yeah. Ravi proposes theoretical biopsy may histopathology wo nahi dikhaya Rocket trader thinks A. Right? That's good. Price, Price Prince. Good name. 
Sandeep also thinks, yay, that's good. So, Doc, yay is absolutely right. Duodenal biopsy may intraepithelial lymphocytes, definitely. Steroid will bring remission. Malabsorption can be a presenting feature. They're all the two statements. Six year old co puffiness of face, convulsions, blood pressure is high, blood urea 80. What is the most likely cause? Easy question. Hypertension is also there. Easy question. Should you answer, doctor? Uh, oliguria, hematuria, convulsions. Question number 100. Is ka wrong kare to? I will cry. Ravi thinks A. Don thinks C. Vaishali thinks B. Indumuki, Price Prince, Akhil, Sabke, Farmaish. C. Absolutely right answer. Acute glomerular nephritis with hypertensive encephalopathy is what you need to remember. A three year old child, sudden inability to walk, both the lower limbs are hypotonic, plantar reflex is equivocal. What is the most likely underlying cause for this acute, acute, flaccid paralysis? Classical question. Sensorium is normal, means it is pure motor. Pure motor means androphon cells are affected. Androphon cells are affected, hence there is a hypotonia, element feature. So think of acute polio myelitis 101. R. Sharma, Sweetie Patil, Sudhakar, absolutely right. Very good, very good. Now, doctor, an outbreak of viral hepatitis was reported June to August. Exposure of the community is because of what? It is the multiple sources over a prolonged period which are responsible with this kind of a clinical picture. You want to look for the malnutrition massively in the entire population. What is the best way to do that? Midam circumference, Shakir state, what value below which it is abnormal, everything you should be sure, doctor. What is the most important determinant that decides infant mortality? Obviously, it is the birth weight, which is the deciding factor, which is most important. Then Millennium Development Goals may, once more, doctor, MDG is a favorite question. If you answer this question wrong, go back to the SPM in the UMedico app, either in the high yield topic theory or in DNB question bank. Mark this particular topic slide. 105. What is your answer, doctor? Let me check. 105. All of you should answer this correctly. Otherwise, I will cry. Sweetie, clean bowl. Start. I am starting crying. Revati. No. Ye is wrong, Revati. Vishalakshi. Oh. Ye is wrong. What is your answer? Sudhakar Sudarshan. C. Rocket Trader. I am now stopping the cry. D. Even wrong may be TV wrong. TV will be the answer. Okay, except question may be TV will be the answer. Doctor, this is the most important question in the world. Isko answer wrong kare to. Marjayega Murli Bharadwaj. Be very sure. You should not do this wrong. If you are my students. Every day I am... Uh, Dearly investing my time on you, living with you, reminding you what is commonly asked in the exam. So you should not do this wrong. Eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. Garibi Khatavo Indira Gandhi ka slogan. Achieve universal primary education. Number three, promote gender equality, empower women, Kerala, Jindabad. Reduce child mortality. Number four. Improve the ma mother's health. Mere paas gadi hai, bangla hai, sab kuch hai. Magar mere paas MDG 5. Improve maternal health. Ma hai mere paas. Be very sure. Combat the HIV, AIDS, malaria and other is 6. Ensure environmental sustainability. Paryavaran ko bachao. 
ग्लोबल पार्टनरशिप फॉर डेवलपमेंट अफ्रीका जाओ एक दो फोटो ले लो बोलो आई एम डूइंग इंटरनेशनल वर्क टैक्स पेयर्स मनी खत्म सो ग्लोबल पार्टनरशिप विद डेवलपमेंट दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट या सो डॉक्टर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन severity of a disease how do you measure doctor severity of a disease we basically measure it by case fatality rate is what you need to remember spot map kaha istemal karte hain all of you know at the local level uh, typically you will identify uh, south delhi mein cases jyada ho rahe hain ya north delhi mein kaha ho rahe hain ya pura delhi mein ho rahe hain locally spot maps are being used so my advice to all of you is 9 am to 12 pm you take the challenge of uh, uh, answering 300 questions stably so then this discussion looks very interesting so be very sure okay otherwise you feel oh, kya hai sir aap running race kar rahe hain definitely monday to saturday is detailed explanation sunday is run 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 and complete as many those questions which require a bit of uh, discussion i will definitely discuss okay doc now what is an example of a live attenuated vaccine out of all this question number 108 mithil khirani proposes bpt gautam says bcg ah mithil aur aiza zahmad wani don't disappoint me bcg now specificity of a test kya hota hai this all of you know very well two negatives by two negatives that is two negatives by all negatives two negatives plus false positives so true negatives by false positives uh true negatives so you have uh typically positive predictive accuracy which talks about positives true positives divided by true positive plus false positive that means all positives will give you positive predictive accuracy true negative by all negative that is false negative and true negatives in the denominator is negative predictive value true positive divided by true positive plus false negative that is all the people who are diseased comes under sensitivity whereas true negative by true negative plus false positive which is all the people who do not have the disease come under specificity you should remember doctor is ko wrong kare to we are out of the game yes now let's go to the next question historical cohort study mein kya hota hai history mein already outcome is over so outcomes already occurred existing records dekh ke hum एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ कोहॉट को एसेसमेंट करते ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द स्टडी शॉर्ट एंड बिकॉज ऑलरेडी जो होना है हो गया शादी भी हो गया सिल्वर जुबली भी खत्म हो गया और आप पीछे देख के यू आर लुकिंग बैक द लाइफ दैट इज हिस्टोरिकल कोहॉट स्टडी अब भी शादी हुआ और आगे पच्चीस साल जाना है दैट इज द प्रोस्पेक्टिव कोहॉट देन दैट इज ऑल द ट्रू स्टेटमेंट देन नाउ रूबेला में क्या होता है rashes appear within 24 hours of onset and incubation period 2 to 3 weeks and you have a uh, post auricular lymphadenopathy there are all the things that you see in case of the rubella iodine ko kaha disinfectant ka istemal karega so basically it is water and skin there are the two locations where the iodine can be used as a disinfectant what are the important measures of dispersion of the values it is the standard deviation and the range range hota na maximum and minimum value ke beech mein distance that is the one which is typically uh, the important measure of uh, the dispersion ravi kumar says uh, one and two correct absolutely pick mosquito pig बेसिक साइकिल ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन कहा होता है पिग बोलते ही हमको एनसेफेलाइटिस याद आते हैं सो जापानीज एनकेफेलाइटिस पिग मस्किटो पिग इज द वन व्हिच यू शुड नॉट फॉरगेट डेफिनेटली वन क्वेश्चन ऑन द वेरियस लाइफ साइकिल्स 
फेवरेट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द एग्जामिनर आर्गो वायरसेस ओके डॉ नाउ ए स्क्रीनिंग प्रोग्राम फॉर चिल्ड्रन वाज अंडरटेकन सो व्हाट इज नॉट ए अप्रोप्रिएट फॉलो अप एक्टिविटी इन दिस गिवन चिल्ड्रन सो बेसिकली providing iron supplementation to all children is a strategy for preventing anemia agreed administering mass deworming to all children ek albendazol maro pura bachchon ko agreeable poor vision hai to corrective spectacles are okay enlarged tonsils hai to pehla you will try the medical management not the surgery that is very important question doctor Question number one twenty. Now, Suleiman Syndex. It was cheapest question on the planet Earth. Disability Index one thirty one. Should you answer? Disability Index is what you need to remember. Now, to transmit Japanese encephalitis, which is that mosquito involved? One thirty two. Should you answer, doctor? Sandeep says, "Jarat Toda, slow, slow, Jana, doctor." Sandeep, next week Sunday, nine to twelve. आप three hundred questions फड़ा फट answer करके एक बार mentally solve करना. Then this session looks slow. Ah, right. Oh my God, one thirty two भी wrong करे तो इस question को भी wrong करे तो poor prognosis in the exam. Vishal Akshi, you have to be careful. Culex tritinorincus is the one which you need to remember. Upen, you also need to be doubly careful. Mithul Hirani, please. I will cry if you answer it and see. Primary route of administration, kya hota hai? Measles vaccination. Let me check. Simple questions. Thappad milta hai if we do wrong. That is the beautiness of entrance exam with single liners. 133. Yeah. Ravi Kumar बोलता है subcutaneous. Jaswinder Kaur, Sweety Patil, Priyanka, Sanjeev Singh, very good. Chirag Goel. Chirag Goel thinks intradermal. No, it is subcutaneous. This is what you need to remember. About the HIV infection. This is an interesting question. All HIV mothers don't transmit. Only 33% mothers only transmit the HIV to their children. That is what you need to remember. Diabetes epidemiology. Let me check how many of you are good in uh, diabetic uh, knowledge, doctor. Diabetes 135. Should you answer, doctor? Diabetes epidemiology. Ravi Kumar thinks prevalence not affected by age. Don thinks maternal diabetes increase the risk of subsequent diabetes. Revati also, Sweety also, Shabas also, Badia, Chindaba. That is true. So, Doctor, five important points about diabetes epidemiology. I wanted to once more remind you. It occur at any age, but prevalence increases more as you keep aging. You are getting closer to becoming a diabetic. Prognosis is worse in younger diabetics who get the complications earlier. Obvious. Southeast Asia may diabetes mard ka bimari hota hai male predominance and obesity central obesity. Like an apple on the sticks, there is a greater risk. And those who are born to mother, they have a threefold higher risk of developing the diabetes. Is what you need to basically remember. Now, doc, forty-year-old, one into one centimeter scaly, itchy black mole on the front of the thigh. No inguinal lymphadenopathy. आप क्या करना चाहते क्वेश्चन नंबर 136, राइट राइट 136, डॉन थिंक्स डी 
Ravi thinks C. Roger also C. Yes. Adarsh Kumar Revati Dheeraj Chobe Jindabad. So you should remember excision by Oxy Doctor, not incision by Oxy or wide excision. Be very sure. Since you did this wrong, Madhasir Arif and uh, Mithul Hirani, you have to go back to the UMedico apps, video library, DMB, surgery, melanoma, re revise it and tell me that you are ready with melanoma topic. Also, please write your comments, record your voices on some of the slides that will start enriching the app and it will be, make the app more and more useful for all other classmates. If you feel that's very good, bookmark it so that your younger brother, maybe your son tomorrow after 20 years while preparing, oh my God, this point is having 30,000 bookmarks. That means I should read it first, he will think. So that is the reason every day as you medico passes, there is more and more intelligence added by you who are consuming it. So please consume it uh, very well. Yeah, right. Now, Doc, what are the indications for TURP for a benign hyperplasia of prostate? What are all the indications? 137, let me see. Uh, Ravi thinks D is not including 2. Okay. So, should you answer? 137. Yes. Don thinks 1 to 4, skipping 3. Then uh, Roger thinks trabeculated urinary bladder is not there. Roger Jindaba. That's good. That's good. Even Projecta Bhagat, Chirag Goel, Shabazz, Harry, excellent. So what are the indications for TURP? Any refractory urinary retention? Any renal insufficiency with retention with the increased serum creatinine and urea? Residual urine volume more than 200 ml? And uh, any bladder outlet obstruction with complications like recurrent UTI, recurrent gross hematuria, large bladder diverticula, stone formation, they're all the absolute indications. What are relative indications? Prostate ka size ke bare mein, IPSS, International Prostate Scoring, Severity Scoring System. Who score more than 20 is an important uh, indication but relative any failed medical treatment and uh, the flow rate less than 10 ml per second and post voidal residual volume more than 100 ml after repeated measurement they're all the repeated indications is what you need to remember other ankyloglossia hai once more doctor oropharyngeal cancer Tongue cancer. Examiner chodega nahi. Bhoot ban ke aega neat PG ko. You should answer it correctly. 138. Let me see. Ravi thinks T3. Very good. Why Ravi answers first, you know? 9 to 12, he solves the paper. So once you exercise your mind on 300 questions, like an examination when the PowerPoint slides are changing, it is all to be there. Uh, Good that you can take part and enjoy this discussion very fast. Akiretti Madhavi, Shabash, Dheeraj. Mujhe ek student ka jirurat hai jo right answer karke humko kush karega. Vishalakshi thinks T3. Roger says, I don't know. Very good. Mudassar thinks T2. Deka. Single liners bole to band bajayega. 
you know it, you know it, you don't know it, your head is shoo. Right? So Chira Goyal strongly thinks it is T2. Ankyloglossia means kyaoja the doctor. Put a fixation of the surrounding tissues go. Right? Devanshi Thakkar. Kush Hua Mogambo. Very good. So, doctor, please don't forget this slide. Hey, sir, we mauka agaya. Up need a PG, you uh, medical app me, is go bookmark, karo, label, karo. start uploading these uh, slides into the immediately. You try to upload these slides and this particular video under a new thing called Sunday mock test discussion. Okay, so that immediately students start uh, bookmarking. T4A invading through cortical bone, inferior alveolar nerve, floor of the mouth, or the skin of the face. T4B is invading masticator space, pterygoid plates, skull base, involving internal carotid. All these invasion, ankyloglossia, is a feature of T4, is what you need to remember. No, doctor. Adjuvant therapy, chemotherapy in a estrogen receptor negative breast cancer may. What is the commonest regime? Who is going to answer this correctly? Let me check. Right. Absolutely latest. No doubt on that. Now, Ravi Kumar says, C. Good. Our guys from tomorrow, what they will do is, our session either hote hi, udar notes up upload ho jayega you medico mein. Evening sessions also. 5 to 8. Deal? Right? So, immediately you can see in the you medico that, that uh, notes which we are discussing is already up, up, uploaded. Tab maza aega. Aap bookmark kar sakte and the, you can make use of these sessions much more. Right? So, Finally, you should tell me, are you all happy with this notes feature of UMedico? You should give me a good feedback. One more version we will rise tomorrow. So when you go to a particular course in UMedico app, you go to a subject, you go to a topic, right? Uh, the notes, all the slides will appear. First slide, one slide, the slide blow hota hai. Then use your finger to swipe it right, left, right, left to navigate. You need not once more come back and then go through the stack. I want to tell you that. Okay. I will also show you that demo. Right. Jaswinder Kaur says, how do we bookmark? There is a dil's symbol. Hai na? Uske upar bookmark karo. Click on the bookmark and it will go to the bookmark ke, uh, stack. Mein chale Next time when you come, no, you can only go to that. Uh, there are three types. Notes bookmarks reminders so those points that you bookmark will go into that bookmark so that's how and uh, in the notes top right corner you have got a button you click it uh, there is a uh, sort option you can sort the slides in the notes based on most bookmark most viewed slides first like that you can be able to sort it right Please give a demo, definitely. Call my demo there now. Yes? Yeah, that's good. So don't be, uh, tell me the name of app, anyone here? Oh, come on, Mother Seal, Arif. You, Medico, you for Uganda. You, M E D I C O. Yeah, please. Somebody please punch uh, to help uh, Mother Seal the Google Play Store uh, link of the You Medico app so that we will help him. And Mother Sir, please call our helpline 9000868356. I'll type it here. Right? So, somebody type our helpline number to help Mother Sir to give a call and uh, get a subscription. So, the answer most of you are seeing uh, uh, Sayed, we will give in iOS in another four or five days. Pela pura Android me fada fad hone ke baad, iOS me upload karenge. I mean, new version. Yes. So, everyone is saying C versus D. That's right. So, it is cyclophosphamide, adriamycin plus 5 fluorouracil is what you need to remember. Tension pneumothorax may. All of you know there's a tracheal shift to the contralateral side 
and there are absent breath sounds where the pneumothorax is there and uh, uh, obviously that will have a tamponading effect on the heart and that is the reason there is a circulatory failure that all the two statements obstructive jaundice with the unresectable carcinoma of the head of the pancreas what is your answer what is what are the procedures that you use you do colitico duodenostomy with gastro jejunostomy then hepatico jejunostomy and gastro jejunostomy cholecystic jejunostomy with jejuno jejunostomy with gastro jejunostomy then all the things which are done except b yeah now there's an injured spleen what are the contraindications to salvage a injured spleen during operation if there's a labile bp or if there is a pre existing splenic disease why to retain the spleen knock it off any intra peritoneal infection also knock off that spleen but age below 50 you tend to retain the spleen as much as possible is what you need to remember now what is the treatment of choice for annular pancreas obviously duodeno duodenostomy helps you to remove that pancreas which is um, around that duodenum and causing a uh, obstruction whenever there is a gastric outlet obstruction what is the best way that you can be able to deliver the nutritional support is my question to all of you 144 so we should remember that uh, yes it is the jejunostomy jejunostomy which will very good roger doc everyone have answered it correct uh not gastrostomy now you want to repair inguinal hernia by local anesthetic then which nerve do you want to block is an important question so you should know inguinal hernia may that inguinal area may what are all the nerves which are involved which can be very painful so 145 shabash says why not parenteral parenteral is a very dirty game only for a short term you want to give parenteral whenever possible it should be only enteral right otherwise lot of infections everything parenteral is not the easy job so everyone is saying sweety patil santosh kumar dube abhi uh, are saying d yeah so it is uh, very much femoral is what you need to uh, remember now when a cavel opening of the diaphragm at the level of the t8 it is a biscuit question you should be able to answer inferior vena cava phrenic nerve are the ones which will be passing through t8 voice of america eight may vena cava 10 may esophagus a may A is aorta. Aorta is at uh, T12. That's right. Traumatic hemothorax may. What do you do? Initially, you will put the intercostal drainage tube, and if the bleed volume of the bleed is more than 1500 ml, then that is an indication for doing a open thoracostomy. Is what you need to ultimately remember. So, with this question, let us. call it a wonderful afternoon doctor thanks for participating and uh, i also experimented with uh, google um, what you call uh, a google hangout and uh, i feel that the google hangout is uh, as good as a regular uh, uh, classroom uh and uh, i invite you is there any difference in the voice quality or anything you felt with this do you vote for the regular broadcast uh, or the google hangout which is good yeah which is good one google hangout is good or the regular broadcast that we do is good what do you vote for i like to listen from you right so 
So tomorrow, once more, all of you join. Yeah, Chirag says, why not every day three hours class? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, regular is good, but the advantage with the hangout is even if I'm traveling somewhere, I can always be with you when it is a time to be with you, to prepare along with you for the exam, right? So, uh, yeah, Devan, she says, you can write on the board that helps a lot in the regular one. That's right. That's also a point. So, once more, pick up a few topics, at least seven, eight topics from this discussion. Acha biryani khao, so jao, get up, have a cup of tea, go to the reading room, our vital, and seven, eight topics that you have chosen. Open it up, finish 15, 20, 15, 20 points. Open the UMedico app, go to the UMedico video library, review the video, review the notes, and then bookmark some of the points and say, these seven, eight topics I did great. And then go to the quizzes and play and get eight by 10 score and say, I'm done with these topics. So that should be your goal. So thank you very much. And uh, thanks for giving wonderful time uh, in this uh, uh, Sunday afternoon. Thank you.